Hey guys, how's it going? So today I've got this HP 85B on the bench that we're going to be powering up for the first time. Well, I'm not actually sure if it's going to power up. I have not plugged it in yet. And I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to show you guys uh, my process for powering up an item, at least an old vintage item that has not had power before. So as not to stress the components, we've got a lot of vintage capacitors and electronics that have not seen any current for quite some time. So I do have a bit of a process that I wanted to share with you guys so you could then, if you're going to power up something, you don't just plug it right into the wall and hope for the best. Uh, I think it's kind of a, a best practice for introducing some voltage and current to some of these components so as to uh, stress them as little as possible. If you're interested in seeing what I do when, uh, when I power up an item, stick around. We're going to get right into it. Hey guys, how's it going? So today this is what we're going to be powering up for the first time. And to show you guys my procedure, what we're going to need is a few things. Number one, a multimeter, a power cord, um, and I've got over there to the left, I'll show you guys that here in just a second, um, some other test equipment that is really kind of essential if you're going to be powering up these items for their first time. So the first thing I do when I'm, when I'm getting a an item ready to power up is I check its fuse. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fuse here. And what I'm looking for, number one, is it, is it the correct value fuse? And number two, is the fuse blown? In this case, it's a 250 volt, 750 milliamp. And right on the back here, that is what this actually says it takes. So that's a good sign. Something else that we're going to check here is if the fuse is good. I can see the filament inside there, but it's always good to just give it a quick check. And I see there's two ohms there. If you like, you can turn this on to the audible, and then you'll hear that there is continuity from one point to the other. Again, that this filament here is continuous. So if this had some random valued fuse, like for example, a 20 amp fuse, let's just say that we opened it up and we saw a 20 amp fuse. Well, that is a dead giveaway that this has blown in the past and somebody has replaced it with a higher value fuse. So I'm always suspicious of that. In this case, it was the right fuse and it wasn't blown. Looks to have never even been taken out of circuit here. Um, something else I check quickly while I'm here. I put the meter in continuity mode where we were beep beep and I want to check these plugs back here and make sure that there's no continuity between the plugs because if there is continuity on this plug back here and again I'm checking I'm checking the male version of this of this plug here if there was continuity that would indicate that there's a short inside and you would not want to power it up so now that that has been tested, I give a visual inspection and things that I look for primarily before powering something up for the first time is the capacitors. Um, always a suspect item. If the capacitors have any bulging tops or if they have some goo that's leaking out of them, that is usually an indicator that the capacitors are bad and you can cause damage to the circuitry because they won't be performing the filtering that they're supposed to do. In this case, these are high-end Sprague capacitors, so um, and I can look at them there, and they're in really nice shape. So I'm not as concerned about this style of capacitor because it's, number one, a name brand. Number two, they're not bulging. Number three, they're not leaking any um, of their electrolyte fluid. So I feel pretty good that these would be a good candidate to not cause harm to the circuit here. If I see any old-style wax capacitors, those are usually a red flag that I would go ahead and even check their capacitance before I power up an item. In this case, I'm going to assume that those are um, still able to supply the filtering that the circuit is is um, is needing. So the next step, once I've done a visual inspection, and again, this looks immaculate. Like when I look inside here, other than very little bit of dust, this has been stored in a case. I'll show you that here in a bit. And it's been zipped up and locked away. So um, this looks to have had very little use. The paper roll here, um, 
looks to be brand new. There is some wear on this belt here. I can tell where it's weathering or age is kind of wearing the belt. It's still quite stiff, but I'm afraid that this looks to be um, have some issues here. I'm afraid of, of powering it up and just letting it spin up. So I want to make sure that if it does power up, I want to be able to unplug it if this starts moving because I don't want to bust these belts. Um, again, doing a visual inspection, the tube is in really nice shape. I blew out a little bit of dust that was in it when I opened the case up. But otherwise, I've checked the capacitors, I've checked the fuse, I've checked for any internal shorts, and everything seems to be good here. So the next step is to get this on the other two bits of test equipment that I've got over there. So number one, it's a current limited variac. And what that really is, is it's a fancy way of saying that it's a it's a variable, that's where Variac comes from, a variable way to supply voltage to an item under test. And then the current limited section is done through, um, it's called a dim bulb tester. And that there's plenty of tutorials on how to build your own dim bulb tester. And what that will do is that will limit the amount of current that will come to this. If there is a short, that bulb will light up and take the current that would otherwise run through the device under test. So having a current limited power source is really essential. And then the and, and variable, that's that's also essential. So it's those three bits. It's a current limited adjustable variac. So that's where the variac comes in because you could change how much voltage is coming to the unit. The current limited is another section. And then the third bit is an isolation transformer. That current limited variac is also isolated from the the power line that comes into my home that comes in and supplies some voltage but that isolation transformer in a sense isolates it that's where the name comes in here it isolates the device under test and any of my test equipment for that matter um, it separates the two so you don't have situations that are more problematic in old tube gear though this does have a tube this is that kind of interesting spot between we have some transistors and vacuum tubes. This is still considered a vacuum tube, the CRT. So we've got some high voltages here, um, but more so that becomes an issue when you're dealing with more vacuum tube gear, when you can have, say, one of the plugs, it's not, this is the original plug that came with this, and you'll see it's a three-prong plug, so it, it can only go in one way and knowing this is an HP there's a very good likelihood that that nobody has been in here messing about changing wires up but in in some tube gear you can have what's called a hot chassis to where say this piece of metal back here could become energized and if it were to be plugged in and you were to touch this while say touching something else or be grounded it, it could be a really bad day so now that I've kind of gone through that um, preliminary check, checking the fuse, checking for shorts, checking the capacitors, checking visually for anything that just looks out of sorts. And if I see green lights all the way around, then I'm good to hook it up to my isolation transformer, my current limited variac, and slowly introduce voltage and current into this unit. So let's go ahead and jump over there and I'll show you guys what I do. All right, so this is my current limited supply here. What I've got here is, here's my Variac. This is the current limited source that I was referring to. And then my isolation transformer is right there. So the way this works is when I turn on my isolation transformer, it sends power through my Variac and then out this switch right here. Let me get this where we can see it. This is my supply. So what I'm going to do is, number one, plug this item. Oh my word, this is, <laughs> this is rough working around this camera here. So I'm going to plug in the device under test, in this case the HP. We're going to plug that in there. See if I could get that in frame there. Not that that really matters. You guys know that's plugged in now. So then the next step is going to be, I lower the voltage on my Variac all the way down. 
So now that's set to zero volts. Then what I'm going to do is power on my isolation transformer. So now that my line voltage is coming through, it's running through this bulb here. This is the current limited source that I was referring to. Then out to here, this is what the device is plugged into. I've got this set up where I could turn on my voltmeter here. And that's checking for AC voltage. And I can see right now it says one volt. So now what I'm going to do, and this is the part, um, really the, the, the process of what I do. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn this up. Um, I'm going to step back one time. First thing I do is I power up the unit that's under test. Now the HP is powered up but there's no power coming to it. So we've got one volt coming through here into the device under test and the test and the device is on. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ramp this up to 30 volts. So as we can see from the meter, we've got 31 volts coming through this unit. And then what I'll do is I'll set um, just, this is just the, the preliminary. I'm looking to make sure that no current is being drawn. This light is not lighting up. So we're in pretty good shape right now to ramp that up to 60. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this up to 60 volts. So now I see on my meter, we've got 60 volts. I still see no smoke coming out of the machine. I still see that my dim bulb is not lit up, so I know there's no shorts. At least I feel much more confident that there's no shorts on the unit. And we're going to go up to 80 volts. Again, no smoke. I wasn't expecting any to come out of this, but what we're going to do now is put this up to a full 115 uh, volts might even push it to 120 because after thinking about it somebody that's going to plug this in is when they buy this uh, from our eBay store they're more than likely going to be just plugging it into their home so I want to go ahead and make sure that it's not going to have any issues um, right off the bat so I'm going to go ahead and crank up this Variac to 115 to start with and see if we get any life from that LCD or from the CRT Well, there we go. We're at 115 volts, and I see, you see that right there? Right there, you can just make it out. Looks like it's waiting for some basic commands. So let's try list. Ah, so that's a good sign. That's our memory, 30 kilobytes. I'm gonna go ahead and just write a quick basic program. Oh, I see the, so yeah, some of these keys. All right. Looks like all the keys are functioning here. I might have said that too soon. So yeah, they're, they'll benefit from being used. Yep, so that's nice. All right, so we're gonna write a quick basic program just to test. So it looks like the paper is working. Able to put in some basic. So 
now, now we can start having some fun. I'm going to go ahead and get the book out and uh, take a look at it. But that is my power up process um, that I go through before I just, um, if I'm going to test an item, that is my process that I go through. So as we can see, it's all working here. At least the basic functionality that I have tested is working. So what I'm going to do now is um, go through and test this further, check all the keys, make sure they're all uh, functioning well. And yeah, that's going to, this is a cool find. I'm really glad that it worked uh, just right out of the box. I was, I was kind of not expecting there to be any issues. Um, something that's as clean as this and being an HP um, they make such nice components that uh, I'm still a fan of HP. If you like HP, drop a comment down below. If you hate them, drop a comment down below. It's all good. Uh, but I do like HP. Um, so that was my process for how I go about putting life into an item that has not been powered up for uh, decades. If you enjoyed this kind of video, let me know because I, I just had a whim said I was going to power this up today while I was working on it for my eBay store. And I said, you know what, maybe some of you guys might like to see my power up process because I don't see many videos about it. I don't know if I've ever seen a video on powering up an item. I've just learned uh, years ago that you don't just shock capacitors. Give them some care. Give them a little bit of love. They've been stuck in boxes and buried under things in the back of barns for periods of time. So bring them up to voltage slowly and incrementally um, and then hopefully it'll it'll go into somebody's hands who's going to put it on display so generations to come will be able to see what used to be a portable <laughs> a portable laptop uh, this was one of the early computers built by HP so it's a really cool find I hope it goes into somebody's hands who's really going to appreciate the the vintage nature of this but that's it for me thanks for hanging out with me on this video um, if you learned anything let me know if you got any pointers share them in the comments i'm always willing to learn more and i'm sure anybody that reads those comments would also appreciate if you have some expertise in in powering up old bits of tech it's always good to share that for anybody else who is up and coming wanting to uh kind of get into this so thanks again enjoy the rest of your day or evening and we'll see you on the next video bye for now